Hello, everyone, and welcome to a very special Patreon episode for the Legion Patreon page. We are Friday Nightmares Podcast. I am your host, Mr. Smoke Show Crawford, coming to you from Swartz Creek, Ontario, Waterdown, Canada, Michigan, <laughs> United States. <laughs> and with me, as always, is the Canadian <laughs> Queen of the North. <laughs> Heather Powell coming to you today from Waterdown, Ontario, Canada. Um, very excited to be doing this Legion podcast special. And we have a very special guest with us today. Like, honestly, I think have, doing something special for Patreon is the only way we could actually have this person in our podcast. Because <laughs> as much as I tease this individual, I respect the shit out of him when it comes to his knowledge of movies, his taste in movies, and the ability to articulate. It's recorded now. He can play it back every time I insult him for other things so he knows what I really think of him. He is from the Exploding Heads podcast, and he is Mr. Brandon Orlick. What is going on, Brandon? Hello, hello. <laughs> Our threesome is complete. That was, yes. The, wait, the waiting to get in a threesome with you two. It's true. More Scott than me, as we hear about all the time between these two. I feel like I would be that awkward person kind of staring at them, not like sure where to jump in. <laughs> just be going at it. And I would just be like, oh, this is cool. This hey, is cool. We're a tricycle and a tricycle needs a third wheel. <laughs> <laughs> yes. So we've had um, Dave C on before, but Brandon, we know you're actually the brains of Exploding Heads. Like, we Pretty understand much. that really you're the glue, the comedy genius that holds it all together. So thank you for gracing us uh, with your presence today. Thanks for having me. This yeah. is weird. Heather's saying so many nice things. <laughs> I, I feel you should, like, shut the fuck, Brandon. <laughs> like, like, this I don't is know all what fake. The hell. He's like, who is this person? Who's this doppelganger that's yeah. pretending to be Heather on Zoom? It's not even the real Heather. Oh, um, don't worry, when the camera's not rolling, she'll be back to normal. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> high five, high five, high five. <laughs> <laughs> um, so we're going to be doing top five anthology stories today. So we're actually picking stories um, from our favorite anthologies, and we'll be talking about them, which is why Brandon loves lists, so he's here with us today to pull this bad boy off, and then Scott and I have a special surprise at the end of all that, and Brandon will be our judge, and it's a bikini contest! Woo! Woo! <laughs> I've already lost to Scott, I don't even know what the point <laughs> is, he's um, but Scott, I don't know, do you want to start us off with your shout-out anthologies that you want to, that you want to give? Yeah, I actually have uh, five honorable mentions that I want to give because like when we were prepping for this show, it just, uh, there are just so many amazing stories in so many awesome anthologies. Hell, every anthology almost always has at least one really kick-ass story. And that's one thing I love about anthologies. It's one of my favorite subgenres. Um, but yeah, I, I had to whittle my list from like, I think I had 25 stories total. I had to whittle it down to 10, five honorable mentions five in our top five. So yeah, I'll go off, I'll list off the top five, or list off the five honorable mentions right now. Uh, so the first one is... Drum roll. Uh, me. Dum, 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 dum. Terrible. <laughs> it's terrible drum Brandon's like, God, I didn't know I was coming on to this fucking C show. It's not even a B show. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so yeah, I'll, I'll go through these real quick, but uh, the first one on my honorable mentions is KKK Comeuppance from Tales from the Hood of 1995. Oh. Just I always, whole... I always thought it was called <laughs> come up. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> but yep, if no one is, uh, if anyone's not uh, sure of the titles of these short stories, this is the one with the killer dolls, and I just love this one because it's got the freaking uh, clan member that's bought this old uh, slave house, and then these dolls are pretty much killing it. Yeah, it's actually one of the scarier dolls come to life. Yeah, movies or short stories or whatever. Yeah, but then the next one I got, um, just because it's it's got to be mentioned, but it's uh, from Trick or Treat from 2007, and that's the story about Sam when he when it's like his little story at the end uh, with him. So the wraparound. Yeah, I guess you would call that the wraparound. Yeah, but yeah, but I just love that one. Uh, Heather likes one. to call it the reach around. Oh, I sure do. Yeah. <laughs> That's my favorite <laughs> short story, though it's usually pretty long. You know oh, what I'm saying? Hey, you know what yeah, I'm yeah. saying? High five, high five. High five. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God, this is going to be great. <laughs> um, 
But the next one that I am going to talk about is The Cold from the anthology Necronomicon of 1993. Can get through that. I didn't see um, it. This one was just really cool because it's basically about this. Uh, it's about Lovecraft. It's well, yeah, it's Lovecraftian <laughs> stories. Smart ass. <laughs> but it has uh this character that has been like basically an immortal, but he has to stay keep everything at a very cold temperature or he will pretty much melt. Um, and the effects in that one are just awesome. Uh, the next one I want to mention is Frozen Fear from the anthology Asylum from 1972. And that one, it's basically about a uh, a husband and wife who uh, the wife ends up killing her husband and throwing him in the uh, throwing him in the freezer and like chopped up pieces and the body parts start coming to life and tormenting her. You know, it really takes a long time to chop up a body. Every right? time they do this chopping up shit, like it, I'd be exhausted. I would give Wait, up. Asylum. Wasn't that the one where he kills the wife and chops her up? Or yes, yes, yes. Yeah, oh. It was. Yes, it was vice versa. My bad. Sorry, Scott's so overwhelmed by how handsome Brandon is. Oh. Like he can't even fucking focus. No, I honestly I wasn't gonna say anything because I was really drawn into Scott's beauty myself. But then <laughs> but once he mentioned asylum, I understand why he got confused because the girlfriend that the husband's cheating on with yes. shows up and then the body starts tormenting her. Her. Yeah. Yes, that's what it was. All right. Thank you, Brandon, for clearing that up. <laughs> The other and the other one I want to bring up is uh, called The Accident from Southbound, where it's the girl that gets in the car wreck and the guy ends up taking her to the hospital to try to save her life. And the people on the phone that he's calling for help is just telling him what to do. And it is such a fucked up situation. Yeah. And it's just so dark and just horribly violent. Well, the practical effects. Yeah. Are really fucking good in that story. It's that story impressive. alone. That story alone just made me uneasy. Yeah, and the whole the whole anthology. I think both you and Brandon recommended it to me. Mm -hmm. And yeah, it's it's solid. It's definitely dark. It was scary at parts too. Like someone <clears throat> Tim Davis made fun of me that I oh, thought yeah. it was scary. <laughs> but it's scary. Like there's it's, it's just there's some things that are just a little too real yeah. in it. Um for my liking anyway. Yeah, like but, the yeah. flying robots. Yes. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. They're not robots, aren't they? Demons. They, like they, are, they look like things. the mentors from Harry Potter. <laughs> Yes, that <laughs> is actually a very good comparison. Like, uh -oh. oh, fuck. Harry Potter alert. Harry Potter, our Nerd. Harry Potter. Nerd. <laughs> Nerd. <laughs> 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 you, this is gonna be a great podcast very serious here on patreon we you guys pay the big bucks for serious shit yeah um i guess are you done scott Did you yep need that is yep yeah, that's the end of my uh, honorable mentions i'm so. glad that you mentioned two particular not only segments but that you brought up the films because they're two of my favorite anthology films that i left off my list which one's that? Trick or Treat and Southbound. Southbound was my number three of 2016 when it came out. And uh, I left both of them off the list and didn't pick a segment because they're the type of anthologies where, where it almost flows into one movie. So it was kind of yes. hard to separate it. Like, even though each individual segment is awesome, I would almost rate everything in all of them 10 out of 10. I, I just felt like it works better as a whole, obviously. Yeah, they definitely do. But I decided to give them shout outs because yeah. obviously they're like they're especially trick-or-treat it's just such a well-known anthology uh -oh. i just had to at least give yeah. it a shout out i mentioned the hole and heather started salivating calm down <laughs> <laughs> i got excited <laughs> you're excited, you're excited. feel these nipples mm, amazing um so as you can hear brandon knows a lot so we're gonna move over to him because i'm really excited I to hear what his honorable that. mention yes you do stop it you do know a lot um about movies <laughs> life i don't know but movies yes <laughs> life i failed <laughs> but what are your honorable mentions brandon? okay really so cool. first honorable mention for me is a film an anthology film i didn't usually enjoy in the past and i watched it this time it was the best time i had with it and it's the gas station segment from body bags oh nice yeah that's a fun one that yeah. was a blast yeah. man i forgot how good that one was and yeah. even the whole film was a lot more enjoyable even though carpenter's acting is <laughs> it's painful it's yeah. a little painful but yeah. that was fun so uh yeah getting to see uh robert carradine as a psycho killer is awesome yeah uh mm -hmm. Kwai Don, a first time watch for me yes now the story i'm gonna shout out is the black hair the first story oh nice yeah i uh it happens to be my second favorite in the in the in the um in the film itself but i do love this story of this samurai 
who leaves his wife because he's poor and he wants to marry someone rich and, and have this post of, uh, of high nobility. And then he kind of regrets his decision and years later returns to her. And you think everything's going to be happily ever after. And it's really dark and sinister. It's yeah. really, a, it's a great film. The first three stories in this film are fantastic. I can leave that fourth one, but <laughs> yeah, I'll say it is probably my favorite number one or number two all-time favorite anthology i'm cool with that i can't argue that that's yeah, just an amazing stories all around and i have a feeling it will be brought up later <gasps> spoiler alert. not by me <laughs> heather will bring it all in it's gonna that's, be her top five that's too highbrow for me guys my anthologies are <laughs> lower level <laughs> Trick or treat, sorry from Trick or Treat. Creep show, sorry from Creep show. Trick or treat and Creep show. The end. <laughs> no, no, this is Heather's top five. A through E from ABCs of Death. <laughs> <laughs> That'd be amazing, wouldn't it? Oh my god. Number five, E. Number four, D. Number three, C. Because I love the D. Hey, 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 high five, high five, high five, high five, high five. You beat me too, and I was going to actually change your number one to the D. <laughs> <laughs> I'm All right, sorry, third, me interrupted your list. Third shout out. Um, Slumber Party Alien Abduction from VHS2. Hmm. Oh, nice. Yes. Uh, part of what I think is the best back-to-back stories in horror movie anthology, that with Safe Haven. Yes. I think just a one-two punch and the alien abduction, the POV shots, everything that's going on is just absolutely intense from start to finish. Yep, I used to dislike that one, um, and then rewatching it a couple different times now, I've it's grown on me more and more. I'll say this: I think VHS two is leagues better than VHS. Yes. Yeah, I agree I, with you. It's all much better. Like, hundred percent. Get through viral. I've tried three times now to watch VHS viral. Yeah, yeah. viral. Viral's a mess <laughs> too. But I. What? But people what? love VHS, and I'm like, I, I don't get it. I'm yeah. I'm not a big fan of the original. Uh, okay. I can't believe I left this story off my top five, but it's from Creepshow 2, and it's called uh, Old Chief Woodenhead. I like that Oh, one. nice. It's a fun yeah. one. Yeah. Yeah. I love it. Uh, for those of you who haven't seen it, obviously about a, uh, a wooden chief who comes to life to avenge the death of not only the shop owners, but to re- re, uh, regain the jewels, the turquoise jewels that are stolen from his tribe's people. And uh, it's really, really good. Yeah, and I, I rewatched that? that one. I rewatched that one earlier this week. And yeah, that story is just really good. Nice. Yeah. Yeah. That's that one has aged the best for me yes. in part two. I, I, I always enjoy the raft. To me, the hitchhiker as a kid was the scary story and mm-hmm. to me that's now become my least favorite probably in both creep shows oh wow. interesting yeah interesting o- only because it doesn't it doesn't have that scare factor anymore it's not as mm. it's just gone mm. all right and my last shout out actually let me just give one honorable mention to an entire movie and that's a movie called horror stories from 2012 it's I have a not sa- heard of this. south korean film it spawned two sequels honestly i could have put all four stories on my list that's how good this film was Oh, wow. Awesome. Yeah. Awesome. So definitely check that out. But my number one honorable mention is from a movie called Scream Time. And it's a short story called Dream House. Now, Scream Time came out in like 1983. It is available on Prime. The issue Scream Time has is it's super low budget. It looks like it's one step above us grabbing a camcorder from the 80s and just shooting our friends. Oh, wow. It, that's what it looks like. But the story in Dream House is this young married couple move into a house and the wife starts to be tormented by visions of people being killed in the house and a killer with a knife running around the house. And you think it's all ghosts of the past and she's haunted by the ghosts of the past. But the way it plays out and the end, it's just like a it's a WTF moment at the end when you find out what is really going on. And it's really well done. And it just so happens the other two stories in the film are actually pretty entertaining as well. They have a Punch and Judy one and a fairy story in there. Nice. And uh, I I highly recommend it. So Dream House from Scream Time. Awesome. Thanks for the list. That's awesome. And back. High five, high five. Um, so my shout outs are pretty basic bitch, um, but that's fine. I am who I am. A through E. Yeah. <laughs> At the ABC. Uh, so one of my shout outs goes to Hit and Run from Immortal from 2019. Oh, nice. Um, I thought this was an excellent story about what would happen if someone could actually survive a hit and run and come back to take vengeance and was a very real conversation. It wasn't creepy ghosty, but it was creepy in a whole other uh, way. And I think Immortal 2019 is one of the realest anthologies I've ever watched. Yeah, I agree. Uh, The stories hit home and they don't 
they don't really horror it up. It's it's real life horrors, and with a little bit of some suspended disbelief. But good, good anthology. I loved Scare Package from 2019, but what I really liked about that was the wraparound about Rad Chad's Horror Emporium. <laughs> I knew it. I knew that was going to be on your list. It was so funny. And what really did it for me is the scene where the kid shaves his head and pretends to be like Jason, only Jason had cancer. <laughs> it's mm-hmm. like, oh my God. I just think that scene is so funny. Um, so shout outs to that. Three Extremes, which was a first time watch for me. And the short film cut. Yes, because yes. I did not see that twist or coming. And even now, I feel like I need to rewatch it because I'm like, did I get this right? Yeah, Maybe Brandon can explain it or Scott can explain it to me. I right. actually left it off my honorable. Yep. It's it's actually written on my paper here as it's an same honorable, here. But I didn't want to I didn't want to have a sixth or seventh honorable mention. Yeah, that was the exact same thing with me because cut was on cut, my honorable mention list. Yeah. <laughs> what a what a well acted short film now the films in that aren't really short they're what 30 minutes at least aren't yeah. they yeah i think they're like 40 minutes each. yeah that's like a two-hour film yeah they're definitely some heavy thick stories all the stories in it are good are good but cut just really stood out to me the most uh tills from the hood 2005 welcome to my mortuary so the wraparound and i tied in rogue cop nice because wow that was pretty relevant to 2020 <laughs> right so- uh when i first watched that i said to scott i thought tales from the hood was a goofy funny fucking film no that's the sequels no it's a fucking heavy political social economic statement still Um, relevant today 25 plus very relevant today (laughs) every freaking story every single one was really relevant today so i really enjoyed that um, oh, sorry, Tales from the Hood, 1995, right? I said 2005, yeah. right? 1995. Um, and Creep Show 2. But I chose The Hitchhiker. So the one nice. that Brandon <gasps> wasn't digging. <gasps> I just love that. Thanks for the ride, lady. <laughs> I just find that character, A, very resilient. That happened oh, my in my nightmares as a kid. Thanks for yeah. the ride, lady. We used to say that to each other. My brother and I used to say that to each other as kids. <laughs> and we'd scare the shit out of each other. Do you still say it to each other when you see each other? Yeah, I say, thanks for the ride, lady. <laughs> <laughs> and, and he's like, what the fuck is going on? Um, but no, I, I dig that story. I just think it's a fun little short story. And I really like the woman in it. Her talking to herself and trying to kind of rationalize everything. I I think the acting in that whole thing was actually pretty good for, for what it was. So, yeah, right. Of, yeah because i enjoy every story from creep show too as well like they're just fun yeah they're good times right there it's a very now that i've watched more anthologies it's a very you know it is a basic bitch anthology it really is compared to some of the south korean ones that are out there like there's some pretty fucking heavy heavy stories or even some ones that have been done in the most recent years i feel mm-hmm. like in the last five years either anthologies have gone really silly like scare package or they've gone real heavy like immortal like yeah. it's it's one or the other right and um i find that quite interesting so scotty why don't you start us off with number five and we'll go to brandon and then we'll go back to me all right so my number five came from a story that if you looked at the cover you'd be like what the fuck is this shit <laughs> uh and that is the changeling story from a christmas horror story from 2015 cool, cool. nice yeah, I just, I've watched this. This has become a Christmas tradition to me since this movie has come out. I just love this anthology. Like, every story in it is good. The And the only one that just kind of doesn't fit with the rest of them is the one where they're in the high school and the haunted house, the haunted high school type situation. Mm. But every one of them, like, just has, like, this great Christmas feel to it. And it's just dark. But the Changeling one is the one that gave me the most, like, just dread and creepiness because... You know, that's about this uh, family that goes across this uh, across this field that you're not supposed to be trespassing to get themselves a Christmas tree, and they lose sight of their son, but then they eventually find him, and, you know, they go back and set up the Christmas tree, and their typical Christmas stuff's going on, but the child starts acting very strangely, and, like, kind of aggressive towards the father, and almost sexual in nature towards the mother, and... You just find out later on that, yeah, the your, their child ended up becoming missing and a changeling came home with them. And the owner of the tree lot um, pretty much calls him up and says, you need to bring that back here now or it's just going to get worse. And yeah, like he 
goes back there and you realize that yeah, this guy is pretty much the caretaker of all these changeling creatures that are there and they still had his son but man i know i'm kind of just explaining the whole entire story but i figure with doing these top fives we're going to be giving spoilers but i this by the way everyone we're giving spoilers (laughs) (laughs) oh yeah uh uh, spoiler alert spoiler alert (laughs) but yeah this is a 10 out of 10 story for me because i just find it so damn creepy and like i just love the way this whole story plays out it is a great story Mm -hmm. heavy with atmosphere and just an awesome terrifying showdown in the apartment with the kid yes Mm -hmm. It's an example of children used well in horror movies. It's, oh, it it's a is. real example of innocence being lost and also taking that innocence and changing it as something really fucking creepy. Like it was, it was, I agree with Brandon and you. It, it's a really well done anthology. And it's too bad that the cover has on it what it does. Yeah. I think it kind of turns people off. And I believe it was Brandon who said that it came out the same year that Krampus did. Mm-hmm. And I think Krampus overshadowed it. And yeah. I would believe that because it's a shame. It's a really good movie. Yeah, I'll okay. say like every story in it is great. And then like just that whole wraparound story is just kind of heartbreaking. Yeah. Oh, man. When that that first time I saw that wraparound and the reveal of what was going on, I was like, oh, man, that's awesome. I was shocked. Yeah. Yeah. I did <laughs> not see that coming. And then it happened. I was like, oh, that's cool. Ooh. And yeah, my um, jaw hit the floor on that one. I'm like, what the fuck? <laughs> and what's why am I drawing a blank? Captain Kirk. who plays oh, um, William, William Shatner. Shatner. Shatner, uh, he's related to the family in the uh, uh, Krampus story. In the Krampus story, yeah, God, look, yeah. I forgot the Krampus. Yeah, he's because he he shouts them out at some point, talking about like his niece or something. Yep, and he has a picture of them, like yes. with, uh, with a, like a greeting card or whatever. Yeah, but yeah, like I I had to bring this one into the fold because yeah, it's, I feel it's not really talked about besides in the podcast community because almost every one of us podcasters have either watched it or reviewed it on our shows at one point or another, but. And the horror horror click in general, I don't think it gets enough love. Yeah, you're probably right. You're probably right. All right, Brandon. What do you All got? right. My number five is from 1972's Tales from the Crypt. Ooh. Mm. And it's the last segment, and it's called Blind Alleys. Mm. Nice. Tell us more. Tell us more. Tell okay. me more. Tell me more. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, it's about a new director of a home for the blind who basically comes to take over. He comes with his uh, German shepherd and he's a former soldier and he likes to live in uh, luxury. So he comes and him and his dog are eating well and living well and all that, but he's cutting all costs around the home. He's cutting food costs, so they're eating terrible food and he's cutting the heating costs so people are freezing to death. In fact, one of the patients dies of hypothermia. And that's when what the group of uh, of blind people who live there, led by George, who's played by Patrick McGee, decide to revolt against the doctor. And they basically take him hostage and lock him and his dog up in the basement for, for a couple of days. Yeah, it's a while. Yeah, it's, it's, yeah I think it's two days, but uh, they leave them there and they leave them to starve and they concoct this whole labyrinth of razor blades and stuff like that. And it's just really cool when he finally opens the door to allow the major and the dog out and how it plays out. Yes. The comeuppance are great in this. It is a real, like, fuck you piece of shit movie. It's great. Yeah, every every story in Tales from the Crypt and Vault of Horror for that is all about the comeuppance. And honestly- Same with the TV series too. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And this one, I just, I I love it. I don't know what it is. It reminds me of like other films like Buried Alive. I just love the whole idea of like being held hostage and you open that door and you think you're free and and all of a sudden Mm -hmm. you're in this labyrinth of razor blades and- just crazy survival obstacles that you have to make it through and i love that the protagonists in this were blind and obviously i don't think they were actually blind but i think they portrayed being blind very well and i think it actually spoke to some of the shitty conditions that we keep people in yeah i didn't like i don't think that was far off from what happens right right i didn't see that coming oh what (laughs) funny ladies and he's single if anyone's listening no he's not he's mine Okay, well, when he's Scott's done with him, <laughs> um, <laughs> this is awkward. Um, <laughs> but yeah, I I I loved um, Tales from the Crypt. We will definitely hear more about that movie later. It was such a great watch from nineteen seventy. Spoiler alert! Yeah, that movie. Spoiler is amazing. alert! Um, so my number five 
it's going to be pretty basic, bitch, but you are what you are. E. And uh, it's Creep Show 2, The Raft. And nice. I, the first time I saw this, so I used to go somewhere in, in the summer and there were these rafts we would swim out to, like legit. And <laughs> we would hang out on them. And I, when I saw this, I'm like, oh, that's me. I, gosh, I hope that's not me. <laughs> <laughs> They're all dead now but i enjoyed kind of i i really felt like this was hitting on pollution i don't know if that was the case for me just reading into it the simple piece of what looks like a cheap ass garbage bag floating in the water causes so much terror for yes. these people and even when it starts to like seep up through the raft and get to them and there's absolutely no escape and that one kid who you think got away and he swims to the shoreline and he's on the shore and he's like, oh, fuck you. Ha, ha. And then the, and then it basically tidal waves him and pulls him back <laughs> into the water. I was like, oh, snap. You just got bad. Um, you just got bad. <laughs> I just think it's a really clever story that almost anyone can relate to who's ever been swimming and, you know, I don't know, maybe gone into some like murky water and shit and kind of wondered what's underneath it. I just or, been, it, or been killed by a garbage bag. Or been killed by yep. a garbage bag, which That's is the a, worst. Serious, a serious cause of death in the United States from what I hear. Not Number COVID. two, right behind COVID. Right behind COVID. <laughs> um, absolutely. You know, at this point, I wouldn't be surprised. So um, I, I think this is just a really relatable story, which is why it came in at my number five. I like it. Yeah, it's a great, it is. great little story. It's and the icon and the iconic image for me is when the first girl gets killed, that when she's being sucked down, she reaches the hand up and it's like Wah! it's good special effects, right? Horrifying, like, terrifying. Absolutely awesome. All right, Scotty, we're back to you for number four. All right. So my number four is from a film from 1987. And both Brandon and I, like behind the scenes on our chats, have talked highly about this film and convinced Heather to watch it as well. But that is from a whisper to a scream. Oh, that one. <laughs> what are you talking about? <laughs> and the story I chose, they didn't actually give a title for this story, so I just kind of gave my own title, but I call it The Glass Eater. And it's the story about the, uh, but it's a freak show at this like carnival circus where this guy basically is a glass eater. He eats glass, he eats anything sharp. And unfortunately, while he is, well, all these freaks unfortunately are basically being manipulated and blackmailed by this voodoo priestess that runs the show. And she's basically, they are her slaves working there for the rest of their lives. And basically like saying, you know, I gave you your freedom. You can be who you want to be now, but you are mine for the rest of your life. It's kind of like well, Scott on Friday Nightmares. Yes, exactly. <laughs> what powers I've... did you give Scott? The power of <laughs> sexiness? That's right. The power, power of smoke, of the show. smoke show. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah, this story ends up, the guy, the guy that's the glass eater ends up falling in love with uh, someone that just started showing up at the circus. And well, the uh, madam, I guess you would call her, does not have like that because he's falling in love with her and wants to get married and quit doing this the whole sideshow thing and well she gets her revenge in a very horrific and just mean-spirited way like she's basically using a voodoo doll on him and just like shoving like sharp objects and glass pieces through him where when they are like in the hotel making love all of a sudden he basically just explodes and they making love making love they were making right. love <laughs> well for this story that's what they were because uh, they were they a love, couple they in love fucking. they weren't fucking they were a couple <laughs> in love they were in love but uh Aww. yeah he basically just explodes from the inside out and like the effects which does happen this... sometimes when you make love oh yeah it's true <laughs> it's so true <laughs> But yeah, the effects in this one are just brutal and just holy hell is it violent and it is violent and gory. <laughs> yeah. Gory. Um, the one thing about this story though, like because I think the other three stories in this have a story of comeuppance. This yeah. one does not. This one yeah. is just kind of a just sad downbeat story because after this all happens, the the girlfriend ends up getting pretty much pulled into the sideshow and now she is basically the human pincushion and is going to be there for the rest of her life working for the madam that's what that's heather's nickname <laughs> no the dick cushion fuck yeah it is <laughs> she gets poked with a lot of dick anytime i don't see a problem with that hey. <laughs> it's, it, that doesn't i'm all like yeah give me the dick yeah. um from a whisper to a scream was is that, is that the name of it yep sounds like a uh like a rap album you know, that's does. what you're gonna be doing when I come visit Brandon. Oh, <laughs> oh <yeah. laughs> 
first time watch for me as first time watch for me and honestly shocked me how mean-spirited and good it was every story just dark and nasty and i love that that scene when all the glass starts coming out of him it's almost as if she took all his powers away that she gave to him so it was just his body rejecting all the glass he'd eaten over the years and he just yeah ripped to shreds which is what heather would be when she comes to visit me oh, <laughs> 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 awesome oh, my man. ticket now uh, yeah. <laughs> i hope that's me too later oh. scott's like i hope it's me such a such a good anthology mm -hmm. and uh like i said to you guys early on when i started rewatching all these vincent price was in about 90 percent of every anthology <laughs> yeah. ever made him and peter cushing yeah they got around peter pin cushing <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> high five, high five, high five. All right, we gotta stop that. <laughs> we do. People are gonna be like, what is this high five? <laughs> yeah, seriously. Podcast. <laughs> Inside jokes. Sorry Inside guys. Jokes. Sorry guys. But yeah, uh from Whisper to a Scream. If you if no one has seen it, highly recommend this whole yeah. anthology. It it's is... dark though. Be prepared for a darker anthology. Like it's it's I would say it's way darker than any of the creep shows. Yes. Oh, uh, absolutely. I yeah. would even say probably darker than Kill Tales from the Crypt um up there with i would say an asian <laughs> anthology yeah. like it's you know especially the story you talked about scott like these people didn't deserve it you just feel sad yeah. during that anthology you're not like oh yeah like i get this you're like no like it's, <laughs> it's not yeah, it's good, like but it's an excellent an excellent view of practical effects and storytelling it's just not going to make it feel warm and fuzzy afterwards yeah because i was gonna say and once again this kind of uh falls in line with the whole uh relationships and horror for me like because it's this yeah, bloody relationship relationships with these couple and horror. i do it's, unfortunately this just one this one just ends horribly Ugh, you and relationships and horror <laughs> i know he's annoying oh just think you don't have to podcast them regularly with them regularly and but, i don't uh, have to talk about relationships and horror <laughs> i just can't wait to cuddle you brandon we're oh, gonna have yeah. a relationship with horror <laughs> no show. speaking of brandon uh what's your number <laughs> right. four that would get why i made fun of relationships and horror because my next story <laughs> is about a relationship <laughs> nice <laughs> and it's from the vincent price anthology twice told tales and it's oh, called I missed that one and it's called rappuccini's daughter Ooh. and vincent price plays rappuccini a professor who keeps his daughter beatrice basically prisoner in a garden oh. what he's done is he's injected her blood with the extract from a toxic plant making her touch deadly oh wow and he does this to keep her safe from all suitors who want to be with her because she's a gorgeous woman. And he does this also because his wife ran away with another lover and he's scorned, so he doesn't want to lose the only other woman in his life. So when um, a young university student named Giovanni shows up and starts falling for her and wants to be with her, what Rappuccini does in order to allow them to be together, rather than heal Beatrice, which is the daughter, and take away her toxic touch, he gives Giovanni the same curse that she has so they could only have love and, and feelings for each other but if they touch anyone else they would kill them wow yeah I like this yeah and it it plays out really well it plays out very much i don't it would be spoiler for me to say but i'm gonna say it anyway it's very much a romeo and juliet type thing and, nice. and uh you know basically learning your lesson too late and, Sounds like uh, an extreme way to have monogamy with one person. Uh, yeah, <laughs> right. Yeah. Well, that, that, well, that's what it is. I mean, Giovanni becomes so upset over the fact that this is how Rappuccini chose to to see to his daughter's happiness is by cursing him rather than healing her. Yeah, that is. And, that's yeah. an interesting story. I'm gonna have to check out this anthology. I dig that. Yeah, it was really a, a surprise for me. And that is a total Vincent Price style tale. Mm, mm -hmm. Yeah, it's beautifully shot too. Really well done and just has that that feel for a Vincent Price type anthology story. Yeah, I need to watch that one because that, that one was on my list to watch, but I just never got a chance to get yeah. around to it. But very theatrical. Thanks for bringing that to the table, Brandon. Uh, that's Thank different. You. Thank you. Um, so mine, I feel like that I come in, I'm like, the mind, baby. ABC <laughs> is a head and heart. No, ABC is a volume two i'm just kidding uh dark whispers 2019 the man who nice. caught a mermaid yes very few stories will shock me uh and really get me in a twist i can usually catch when twists are coming i'm pretty quick at it but this was one 
that I did not see coming. And when I actually saw the twist, I was like, what? Um, so much so I will not spoil it completely, but basically it's about a man who is obsessed with mermaids. He's a fisher, fisherman, and he goes out to a pier every day looking for a mermaid. And one day he catches one. And I put catches one in quotations because as a viewer, you see a mermaid, but it's actually something else. And he keeps mm-hmm. this mermaid in, in his garage. And the, and the practical makeup of the mermaid is incredible. Yes. I know Scott's watched it. Brandon, I don't know if you had a chance to watch. I didn't. I think you may enjoy, I, I can't remember a lot of the other stories. So maybe this one is just the highlight. The, the practical makeup is, is phenomenal. How they, you know, create what we would think would be like a mermaid. Like this ain't no fucking Ariel under the sea shit. No, 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 no. Like this is a real mythology belief of what a mermaid would look like. And the relationship between the husband, the wife, and the mermaid is definitely very complicated, and the ending is very sad. And uh, it, it takes a couple of different tropes that usually there's one trope particularly that if you listen to our main show, Friday Nightmares, you know I have a problem with. Mm-hmm. It's done very well here. And I strongly recommend Dark Whispers. It was released in 2019, but it didn't actually, like it was created, I should say, in 2019, but it didn't get a wide release till this year. So it is a 2021 watch. Oh, watching it. And yes. yeah, so I, <laughs> I definitely recommend it. It is worth your time. The wraparound is an interesting. The wraparound is based upon a woman who goes to her deceased mother's house and finds a book of stories and is forced to keep reading them and uh yeah i hate when that happens you know (laughs) i hate reading in general uh so yeah so i recommend people check it out and definitely brandon i think you'll enjoy it i know scotty enjoyed it why can't i get the image of a mermaid in a maid's outfit out of my head (laughs) you've been watching a lot of Pornhub, probably that's why but now every time i say mermaid i I think like do they do a lot of cleaning maybe (laughs) they clean under the seat i hear they're good at scrubbing wouldn't that be a good name for a cleaning service mermaids it probably is a cleaning service out there named that for sure absolutely well, did you know there's know. a mermaid school where you can actually buy like kids can buy these like fabric tails that they put on and they go swimming in them that sounds oh, fishy to me. wow that- doesn't that sound like the most fucked up thing <laughs> it's, it exists though google it later mermaid school it's a thing i will not google mermaid school <laughs> I don't want the FBI looking into me. <laughs> but I will Google mermaid porn now. Yeah. <laughs> That's different. <laughs> um, so, Scotty, we're back to you. All right. Well, I just wanted to say, yeah, I totally agree with you on your uh, the mermaid story because, fuck, that was a good, really good one and caught me completely off guard. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, my number three, I uh, went with one that I've seen a couple of times as a kid, and it's a story that's always stuck with me, and it's – kind of one that uh, will always be close to my heart, and that is the story General from Cat's Eye 1985. Oh, nice. Yep, because you know me and my love of cats. It's been since I've been a child, and this is basically the wraparound story about the tomcat that kind of is interwoven throughout all the stories. Mm -hmm. He ends up getting adopted by this family and... uh, By Drew Barrymore. Yes. Oh, yeah, it was (laughs) Drew Barrymore, yep. Um, and they become like he befriends Drew Barrymore and they like he's basically like just always at her side constantly and well all of a sudden that night she starts like getting sick and like just having a hard time breathing and all this and the parents think it has to do with the cat so they try getting rid of the cat multiple times what you find out that's really happening though is this little tiny troll shows up and is stealing her life essence basically stealing her breath as she's sleeping and the only thing that apparently can hurt this troll is the protector that is the cat. And the story behind this, it's kind of silly because the troll just kind of cracks me up during the showdown between the cat and the and the troll, like where he's like all of a sudden like getting swung into the air and the troll's like screaming for help. And <laughs> but the story in general is just awesome. And I love the whole idea of this cat being the protector of this child and like being the one to take out these trolls. Cause there is always, I think there's always been like these mythological tales of cats stealing your breath while you're sleeping. And so I like that kind of like this was a play on that, but turned around where it was a different mythical monster that was doing this. It's an awesome short story. I I love that wraparound. I think Cat's Eye is a very fun mm-hmm. anthology. It's very fluffy. It's it's not <laughs> it's not a upsetting. fluffy kitty. Fluffy kitty, right? It's not upsetting, but I do like the like the cheesy little fight between the troll and the cat. <laughs> 
trolls like trying to fight it's pretty like entertaining and and a fun i, I think for young kids, it would be a great anthology. To doesn't show he? Them. Doesn't he spin them on the record player and then, yeah, into, the, yeah, and then into the fan? Yeah, yeah. It's, nope. pretty funny. <laughs> it's been a while, it's been a while since I watched it, but that that image is definitely imprinted on my brain from childhood of him. And then yeah, he's like, like he gets all dizzy and everything. Yeah. Too. <laughs> it's really funny. I I'm glad that you chose that one. I'm glad that you that you dug it so much, Scott. Yep, that one stuck with me mainly because I also had a cat that looked exactly like that, one. like a troll. Yes, <laughs> yeah, actually, actually, Scott was a troll. Yes, and. I, um, I steal everybody's breath while they're sleeping. That's interesting. I had a cat that looked exactly like Drew Barrymore. <laughs> <laughs> that's I bet weird. you did. High five. Uh, high five. Awesome pick, Scotty. I guess we should uh, move over to Brandon now and see what move he has over. to say. Move, move over. Get out the way. All right. Um, <laughs> Ooh, bitch. This is a controversial pick. <gasps> oh. Mm. Simply because it does exist in a horror anthology, but this is not a horror story at all. Mm. And it's from the 1977 TV film, Dead of Night. I knew it. Yeah. And it's the first story in there called Second Chance. And it stars Ed Bagley Jr. as a man who re- is just got a love for cars and he restores this 1926 roadster and he just it, the way he talks about his love for cars and his love for restoring it and hearing the story of the car he's restoring he, he gets the the information that a young couple a young engaged couple died while trying to out uh outrun a train in 1926 and he just falls in love with this car and he's like restoring it and he finally gets it done and he's like he tells his mom he's gonna take it out on the town and he takes it out and she's like why don't you take the highway he's like no i'm only taking Taking the roads that existed for that time period like he's being truly authentic Mm -hmm. to to the time period of this car and what happens is this takes place in the late 70s obviously he's transported back in time to the 20s yeah and that's kind of cool yeah and it's really cool and basically what what happens is his car gets stolen by the couple that were killed (gasps) oh It was a couple of Bonnie and Clyde. No, <laughs> no, it, it doesn't. It doesn't get dark. Like I said, it's not a horror story. It's actually a nice story about going back in time and, and almost rewriting history. And, and it has a really happy, like, oh, that's really nice type of ending to it. And, you know, I'm actually not going to spoil any more for that, but it, it's not anything like that. That would okay. be cool, yeah. though. I got to admit, I would like that if it turned out, with, you know, there were violent killers and, you know, 8,000 people died as a result of him going back because of this fucking car. But yeah, it's not that. Because <laughs> I remember you mentioning this story and I watched the uh, I watched this anthology this week as well. And yeah, you're right. This story is just it's, incredible. It's, it's just, just so nice. It's, yeah, it's, it's just a great story just in general. Yeah, I'm a sucker for these sort of like, it's not really like, I guess you would call it like a more of like a tear jerker. Like, oh, an aw, story. Yeah, aw, aw. Yeah, aw, I'll have to check it out. Yeah, yeah it, it's, I definitely recommend it. It's just very very cool story and it's got like the whole time traveling aspect to it and yeah just yeah very yeah, good because i think it gets overshadowed i think i mean it's only three stories in it but i think the standout story that most people remember from this one is the last one about also a changeling yes mm. and it was also an exact story that was redone for trilogy of terror 2 Yep, I remember you telling me that. I can get a chance to watch Trilogy 2. Because Dan Curtis did this, and he did uh, Trilogy of Terror 2. Okay. Interesting. That's a great pick, though. I'm glad you brought that one to the table. Thank you. Coolio. These are some cool picks. So as much as we were joking about this earlier, my next one is from the ABCs of Death. (laughs) I always almost call it the ABCs of Hidden Horror because of Dave C. But the ABCs of Death 2012, L is for libido. And the reason why I chose this story, uh, if, if anyone here isn't familiar with it, uh, gentlemen are forced to masturbate uh, to beautiful women in front of a crowd. It looks almost like it's an elitist crowd and they've captured men and they're having basically a masturbation contest of who can climax first and whoever climax first lives and the person who doesn't climax is killed. And I thought it was a very, very interesting concept on sex, on um, the male, you know, the perception of males only wanting sex and just being always turned on by the female body and constantly ejaculating and turning it into this almost contest. And then, of course, things get darker and darker as the contest goes on and more intense things happen to the woman and to the man where we have, I guess, our protagonist, who's the one that seems to be winning all the masturbation contests. And I just thought it was clever. I've never seen a story like that. 
using that kind of sexual torture or or that kind of you know sexual deviance I guess you could say whatever and I I just thought it was really well done out of all the the films in that series it really stood out to me so but it is it is sexual in nature and it is violent so for some people it may be a little bit too much but I think it's very uh very interesting and artistic yeah that's one of the few stories that actually stuck out to me because a lot of them just kind of I forgot about well would it be different for men watching it like would you guys be like holy fuck if I was in that situation I don't know yeah that's what I'm saying that's that's why it stuck with me like that's why it's one of the few that actually I guess I'll masturbate again (laughs) Brandon's (laughs) like that's my dream Heather what are you talking about I I guess actually (laughs) you know it's more of my nightmare than my dream (laughs) well and that's what I figure right like because you're forced in front of a group of people to a get an erection and then no problem. climax <laughs> and no problem. many times <laughs> scott apparently uses this movie for other purposes no problem <laughs> but yeah i just yeah. thought it was super creative and out of all the stories in the abcs because you get a lot obviously you get all the letters of the alphabet this one to me is one of the better ones or one of uh, the best one in my opinion i just think it's the it's the most creative really well filmed and very good special effects. Yes, I do. I do agree with that. And yeah, it is one that left left you on does leave you just uncomfortable, especially being a male or turned on, depending on Scott's the day that Scott's watching it. Exactly. <laughs> All right, we're moving to our top two now. So, Scotty, just what do you don't got? kink shame. Just don't kink shame me, Heather. I'm not kink shaming you. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Oh, you know I'll do me. Wait, never mind. <laughs> Let's not go there. All right. <laughs> All right. So my uh, number two on my list. This is, I think, the one and only true, like, basic horror uh, anthology on my list, and that one is something to tide you over from Creepshow, nineteen eighty-two. Oh. This is one of my all-time favorite stories in this anthology. It has been since I was a child. And it just grows on me each time I watch it. I mean, it's got Ted Danson. It's got fucking, uh, what's his name? Uh, your Canadian uh, legend. Oh, Leslie Nielsen. Yes, Leslie thank you. Nielsen. Leslie Nielsen. <laughs> yeah, kept, dri- kept drawing her blank, but. You should have been like Naked Gun, and I would have been like. Oh, yeah. You, or you like Naked, Naked. Right. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> I would have been like, you had me at Naked. <laughs> Patreon! <laughs> anyway. But yeah, just seeing Leslie Nielsen as such an asshole in this uh, story is really just kind of in a dark way fun because he's just yeah. he's just pissed that he's basically like uh, his girlfriend has left him for Ted Danson and he's forcing him to watch her drown by like burying them up to their necks up to the coastline of the and sea. And what a way to go. In yeah. all fairness, talk about torturous because you know it's coming. There's nothing you can do and drowning does not not that I think any death is pleasant but no. I feel like drowning the suffocation of it her death by chocolate is awesome. Mm, death by chocolate. <laughs> nom, nom, nom. But uh, yeah, like, nom, nom. especially nom, the, nom, nom, nom. <laughs> well, and especially the way this uh, drowning happens because it's like the tide comes in, you start to drown, and it comes away, so you're still alive, hacking and coughing. Then it comes back, you start drowning more until it just like yeah. you know, eventually comes in all the way, and you can't. And watching the yeah. girlfriend dying on TV, oh my god, because she's like like a half hour ahead of uh, of Ted Danson's. Oh, yeah, it got terrifying. Oh, yeah. it is just awful. And then and then you get the awesome return of them as like the seaweed zombies. And yeah. they just look so freaking cool. They do. And they do. I love the effects. Like when Leslie Nielsen shoots them and instead of blood, it's just like water oozing out of them and just oh, it's just so good. I just love the story. It has that comic book feel to it, like a lot of the creep show ones do, but this one just really felt very comic book style to me. Yeah, absolutely. All joking aside, you could just take the original creep show and just put all five of those stories as the top five and I would not be mad at you. Yeah, yeah. Right. They're that, solid. That, that film is fantastic. That is yeah. probably my favorite story from the original Creep Show as well. Oh, nice. Yeah. In the original Creep Show, is that the it's Stephen King's in that one where he turns into the plant, right? Yep. Yeah. <laughs> That one's funny. It's sad. You feel sad at the end, but oh my God. That (laughs) one, you know, that one's, no pun intended, grown on me. (laughs) (laughs) Same here. Yeah, because it used to be more comical as a kid, yet now watching it, like I get all itchy and I can't breathe watching. I'm like, (gasps) like, like I would blow my head off too. Yeah. Well, and the lonely isolation of it too, right? Yeah. yeah. And that scene where he drinks the orange juice and he's got the the moss growing on his tongue, it it makes me very itchy. Yeah. 
<laughs> I get you. I get you. All right, Brandon. All what right. do you got? My number two is from 1995 mm. version of Tales from the Hood, not 2005's. So. Yeah, that, that one's different. <laughs> 2005 was the remake that I created in my head. Yeah, no, <laughs> I, I gotta, I'm gonna actually seek out that version when we get done recording. You <laughs> Absolutely, it's very it's, good. It's the Canadian version, it's Tales Canadian. from the Hood. Eh? We got it 10 years later. Yeah, yeah. that makes sense. And my, my Tales favorite... from the Bag of Milk. <laughs> Oh, God. Tales from Oshawa. <laughs> uh, my favorite story from that film, believe it or not, and I always thought, like, everyone just thought this was their favorite story, and I learned otherwise when we reviewed this film on, on Exploding Heads, is Hardcore Convert. Oh, nice. Yeah. And this one's about uh, a gangster and homicidal psychopath named Crazy K, mm -hmm. who basically gets gunned down, and he's about to be killed on the streets when the police show up and and basically save his life and he's he's sent to prison for life and he gets put into this experimental program by Dr. Cushing who's also played by Rosalind Cash who Scott you mentioned before she was in the the from a whisper to a scream story that you yes. had on there she was the voodoo woman and yes uh, that's right that's so this is her second appearance and she basically gives crazy k you know what I just noticed that I'm saying basically a lot? That's okay. Basically, basically. It makes sense. Yeah, basically it's coming up a lot. Uh, she puts, It's the word of the day. Yeah, it is. She puts Crazy K into this experimental trial, giving him an opportunity to be released from prison if he could be reformed through this. And it just spirals in, in such a crazy way. Just the whole imagery of all the white supremacy and black on black mm -hmm. crime, mm -hmm. him facing his victims from the past and all that. It's just really really a, a, a gut punch and really relevant not only to the time period but unfortunately still relevant today yeah and i just thought the images of the fictionalized black on black gangster images in the film with the actual white supremacist lynchings and stuff was really dark yeah i don't think there's many stories in this anthology that aren't dark i think kkk comeuppance is probably the most lighthearted one yeah I would I would say so and and lighthearted we say with a real like yeah like yeah, yeah it's, right it's, like <laughs> it's crazy to say but that probably is the lightest one of yeah. the four yeah you're right and this story I feel like was beyond its time like ahead of its time mm -hmm. like I feel like it kind of reminded me uh, obviously um get out not because I think get out is the same story by any stance but I think it the whole mind fuck stuff really kind of reminded me of that and I just, yeah, I agree with you, Brandon. I think it's, I think it, it says a lot. It says a lot about black on black murder. Um, and I, which is a big issue in a lot of places like Chicago. Yeah. You yeah. know, just, and I, yeah. Yeah. The whole scene where he's in the cell next to white supremacists and they're basically comparing killings. Yeah. And they realize that they're, he's realizing that he's the same person. Yeah. This, he's no it, different. He's no different. And then yeah. the, the sets sensory deprivation uh, chamber and facing all his past victims and ultimately in the end can he be saved will he be saved obviously if you've seen it you know the answer and how it plays out but yeah. i'll leave it there if you haven't it's an excellent that anthology you know either the 2005 or 1995 one whichever <laughs> one you can find whether you live in canada or in the united states just kidding there's just one guys it's 1995 <laughs> Uh, please check it out. It's definitely, I think, an anthology that we all recommend. Yes, basically. Um, yeah. Basically. <laughs> <laughs> basically. Basically, we all recommend it. Yeah, um, my number two is from Immortal as well. Oh. And this story was Mary and Warren, who is a couple where the, the woman had cancer and she to do assisted suicide. Uh, it is the most raw fucking dialogue I have ever ever seen delivered i never thought tony todd was that great of an actor i thought he was fine for the roles he's been in until i saw him in this and he plays the husband of a wife that's made the decision to um do assisted suicide there's a documentary crew there that is there filming they're ta them talking about the relationship and her decision and i will make a caveat now if you have had a family member die of cancer this may be difficult for you to watch <laughs> i'm not just saying that for brandon <laughs> i'm saying that because it what do is i win there. what do i win <laughs> do I, do I win a, you win a copy, copy of immortal <laughs> Um, it is heavy. And I just put that as a, as a, you know, as a warning because it, it may trigger some people, not Brandon, but it may trigger some other people, but the acting in this is fucking solid. And the twist in it is 
shocking Mm -hmm. you don't see it coming but there's so many layers to why the husband makes a decision that he makes that is very real and i think very honest when you've been dealing with somebody who's had a sickness for that long and having to watch them suffer it is it is the acting in it alone is just why it's at my number two i really flirted with the idea of putting it number one because I just think it's so well written and so well acted, but there was something else that I just thought the twist was now, much what better. That, what did that flirt look like? Did it look like this? I might put you in. You <laughs> I was like, so um, I was you wondering want, later. You want to be, be my number one? <laughs> so you guys can't see it, but Brandon and I are both curling our hair. The problem is Brandon's hotter than me. And like, this has always been an ongoing issue that Let's Brandon's see. better looking. And it makes me feel like, well, you well, know what? That's okay. You got to surround yourself with tens. So well, you, and you know be- what? It's just, it's, just kind of cruel that you guys are like twirling your hair. I can't do that. That's really insulting to me. Yes, you can. Well, you can do I your can beard. Yeah, I can twirl, twirl beard. my beard, there but it's go. just not the same. I can't look as sexy doing that. Oh, you, you, <laughs> you didn't. <laughs> <laughs> That's just perfect that I fumbled over because you're so sexy. <laughs> Brad is so overwhelmed. Yeah. <laughs> he needs a minute, actually, guys. We'll be back in a second. But I, um, I do have to say uh, this story, I, I had a feeling you were going to bring this one to the table because... I almost did as well, and this, we, we watched this last year, and I will say this is the one movie that I was just bawling my eyes out throughout a lot of it. Yeah. It was just so heartbreaking. It's so like, real. Yeah. Like, it's so fucking real, and I think that's, you know, you watch movies to escape, and that's great, but sometimes you watch a film, and you're like, this is a little close. <laughs> yeah, just a little <laughs> right? bit. And this definitely falls in that category, so check out Immortal if you haven't had a chance to watch it. Uh, if you're into being sad, uh, yeah. Scott, <laughs> number one, Scotty, bring us home. All right. So my number one film comes from an anthology from 1965. Mm. And I kind of hinted at it earlier when we were talking about honorable mentions, but this is the Japanese anthology Kwaidan. Uh, the story, The Woman in the Snow. Mm, nice. This never seen it, but nice. This story, like, for one, it is basically watching a piece of art on screen. It is just so beautiful. Like, everything about it is just fascinating. The colors are just beautiful. They're, they do the old school painted backdrops and the kind like, with, like, the sunset and everything. And this but, is from 1965, right? Yes. That's impressive for 1965, too. It yes, sounds this like is... it was really ahead of its time in filming. Yes, it is very incredible because it's like uh, the, the sky in the background is not just like your typical sky. You see like eyes in the background and you see like just flames. Like you just see these different weird trippy images, but it just looks so beautiful on screen. I actually took a picture of a still shot when I was watching it because I was just like so impressed by just the way it looked. Did you send it to somebody? I, I shared it on Facebook. Oh, I thought maybe you sent it to somebody. <laughs> nope. <laughs> I just shared that one on Facebook because I just love the story and it's pretty much about these because all these stories take place around the era of the samurai. So it's all like, you know, historical horror. Oh my God, where do you like to? Yeah. <laughs> and this one's about these two men that are out in the woods, just kind of hunting and gathering and they get caught in the middle of this horrible blizzard and they are just like struggling to find shelter during this. Cause they're just, they're miles, miles away from home. And they end up in kind of, coming across this old like sh- uh, abandoned shed area so they kind of take shelter in there and then all of a sudden there's this ghostly blue-faced woman that appears that ends up killing his one friend and she comes to him while he's like freezing to death and she basically says I am going to let you live but you have to do one thing and that is never mention this to anyone ever for the rest of your life God, this sounds like a familiar story yes like I said it <laughs> It's literally the story of the gargoyle and tales from the dark side. Um, But this is, he, you know, 10 years go by and he finds a woman that he falls in love with and they end up having a bunch of kids and he ends up just slipping one day and telling her about this tale about how he got saved by this woman in the snow. And well, he told the tale and all of a sudden the woman that he married and had kids with reveals herself to be the woman in the snow. Dun, dun, dun. And she <laughs> sorry. <laughs> and she originally planned on killing him if he ever told anybody, but 
since she fell in love with him and had kids, mm. she just left and let him be. But she said, if you ever do anything horrible to these kids or if you just don't parent them correctly, I will come back. Like how? You. What? It seems like, okay. <laughs> Sorry. Like what would that entail? Like basically, <laughs> you, basically she was threatening, if you don't raise these children right in my eyes, you're dead. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. And like, it just leaves it at that. But just the story itself is just so beautifully done just so well acted like everything about the story is it's a fucking masterpiece coolio it sounds amazing brandon's just nodding because he's seen it too no i have and i agree with everything scott says and if you haven't seen it and you hear that description oh he's married to the woman you better take care of my kids it's like it's it's much deeper (laughs) much more like artistic and beautifully done than that but that really is the gist (laughs) of the story but you need to see it to to watch and this whole film you guys have said is incredible it's what four hours long three hours three three hours okay yep that's the story i originally was going to take was hoichi the earless but brandon and i were talking and that one is the story itself is an hour and 20 minutes so it does not fit the whole of a movie yeah it is full it is a full length movie so we i didn't want to count that as the short story pick for me that's fair that's fair all right mr orlick all right i don't have a number one you are our number one yeah, was, you guys are both my, you guys are my number one. Oh, that's the nicest thing brandon's ever said to me Aww. it's that zoom segment we did that's number one. <laughs> <laughs> all right my number one also hinted at it earlier when i was giving an honorable mention out to slumber party alien abduction called it the second part of the best one-two punch in horror movie anthology safe haven from vhs2 yes. nice yeah uh found footage meets a cult what's not yes. to love there exactly. no heather i don't love cults as much as you think but <laughs> a, a film crew of four infiltrate a, cr- a cult a cult not a cult a cult known as Paradise Gates, and they want to shoot a documentary about the activities that go on within their compound. And they meet the father. That's what he's referred to as. And they basically interview him, and they become uh, caught up in the things that are going on there. They're they're trying to bring about the devil's child. Mm-hmm. And one of the women in there finds out she's pregnant, and ultimately, in the end, gives birth to the devil's child. And it's just absolutely terrifying. Talk about a film that goes from zero to 100. Yes. I, yeah. I couldn't agree with you more. And it's one of the best film found footage movies i think i just I, think they do I a great job yeah. of filming it found footage yeah because it's just a lot of pov shots mm-hmm. just mass suicide ghosts uh devils uh goat monsters pregnant and nothing women scarier ripped than open. goat monsters like yeah. really goat monsters <laughs> goat monsters right. are terrifying right uh, explosions gunshots it's fantastic yeah. I have to say, I am so glad you brought this to the table because this was my uh, number three before I switched it out for Cat's Eye recently. Oh, That's awesome. Yeah. Great minds think alike. Look yeah. Right? Mm. Well, you boys do bring the fire and the talent, so, right? I, I just bring the white claw. So <laughs> I'm going to go with my last one. Uh, and this is thank you to, I think, Brandon and Scott, who got me to ra- watch Tales from the Crypt. I had avoided the 1972 movie because I tend not to love 70s films, but this has proven to me that I can love 70s films. (laughs) And the one is Wish You Were Here. Yes. And the reason why I chose this one is it's based on the story of the monkey paw. Now I'm going to give a spoiler. So if you have not seen this story, you can skip over, but I'm going to spoil it now. And this woman's husband dies in a car accident. She can make wishes, three wishes. And she goes through the series of wanting to bring him back. Well, she eventually does bring him back. But the problem is he's been embalmed. So she, her final wish that she thinks she's outsmarting because she's heard the legends of the monkey's paw is that she says, I wish for him to come back as he is now and to live forever. And he comes back full of embalming fluid and can't be put, in out, put out of his misery. And I can't think of anything more torturous than A, being him, except for maybe being her and having to watch your husband, unless he was a piece of shit, uh, struggle and be in pain for the rest of his life. 
And yeah. that story, I if I could have stood up and given it a standing ovation, I would have. You could have. It would you could have. Ridiculous. I could have. Oh, I would have looked. Ridiculous. And Mickey, my dog, would have been like, um, I'm yeah, going to go back to humping my pillow now. You <laughs> need some help. Yeah. But it was incredible. So that to me, I just loved it. I loved the twist. I, the outcome to me is terrifying. And that's what a great horror story is. I agree. Like this is this was my favorite one from the Tales from the Crypt. I wasn't gonna put it on my list just because I knew you were going to, <laughs> and I wanted to. Le- I didn't want to take that away. If I wanted that for you, because that one is just such a great fucking story. It is. It, it is. is. I was. I was affected by it simply because of the fact that even though we talked about all these stories being about people getting their comeuppance, I thought this guy was actually trying to redeem himself. Yeah. Because within the. the the story he has people telling him to declare bankruptcy so he can get rid of all his debt and he's like no i'm gonna pay off my debts i'm gonna pay the people back he's gonna figure out a way yeah and even though he is a piece of crap and he gets his comeuppance because he did bad things and lost lots of money for people he's doing the honorable thing by at least acknowledging that that he's gonna find a way to pay them back and then of course this happens to him so and his wife suffers too like his wife Oh, she's she's done at the end. She's literally yeah. just on the floor, just sitting there while yeah. he's screaming, ah, I'm burning! Yeah. yeah. That just, oh, it's so just, just heartbreaking. It is. It is absolutely heartbreaking. So those are our personal top five anthologies and our shout outs. So the special thing that we had planned is that Scott and I took turns, or I took turns, we just both did it, writing <laughs> a short story. And Brandon's going to judge us. Um, he judges us Awful. anyway. Oh, yeah, all the time. <laughs> but um, it's, Two I feel down. like this is going to be like American Idol. And he's going to be like, I don't know why you were allowed to exist on this planet. Um, <laughs> but Scott and I are going to read our short stories. And then Brandon's going to say which one is the best. And then we're going to do a poll on uh, on yeah. Legion Patreon. And then eventually this episode will be released to the Friday Nightmare feed. Yep. And we'll have the uh, the poll on our page as well. So, Scott, do you want me to go first or do you want to go first? Um, I will go first. Okay. I'll, I'll fi- I got it already loaded up and ready to go. All right. All right. So I have to preface this by saying... This was extremely difficult for me, not because it was hard to come up with a story, but it was hard because we have made it to where we could only do something with 350 words or less. And I'll be counting each word as you read. <laughs> wait, 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 wait. <laughs> and I have to say, this story originally was over 750 words, and I had to cut it down. <laughs> 750,000 words. It takes place in feudal Japan. It's about 40 <laughs> Oh, my God. Right. He would have if I didn't give him any kind of constraints, Brandon. We would be here till 7 o'clock tonight. Uh, I, hope right. I, hope I hope it's a LARPing story. <laughs> you are both going to be disappointed. Uh, fireball. But this fireball. is something, this is a story I've had in my head for years and just kind of wanted to write it out. So it's I'm, about a guy that lives with too many cats? No, surprisingly not. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All, All right. right. So the, the story is called The Nothing. Late one Friday night, Eric is talking on the phone with his girlfriend, Beth. While they are talking about typical high school gossip, Eric is throwing a tennis ball into his closet, bouncing it off the wall to play fetch with his puppy, Damien. All of a sudden, as the ball goes into the closet with Damien chasing after it, he doesn't hear it hit the wall. He then hears a startled yelp from Beth. Uh, Eric responds, is everything okay? Um, I, I don't think so, Beth responds. Damien is in my bedroom with me with his tennis ball. Eric leaps to his feet and turn, runs to his closet, calling for Damien. As soon as he walks into his closet, he is all of a sudden enveloped in the blackest of blacks, and he feels a slight chill. Then out of nowhere, he is in Beth's bedroom. Beth screams, how the hell did you get here? And he, he just kind of mutters to himself, I don't know, as he turns to look at where he came from. Eric is staring at what is supposed to be Beth's closet, but all he sees is this oily blackness. No way, he gasps. He looks over at Beth and says, one sec, I need to try something. He walks back to the closet as Beth is telling him to stop. All of a sudden, that familiar chill hits him and and he is back in his bedroom. He realizes Beth is still on the phone calling his name. He's like, I'm fine, I'm fine, I'm back in my room, he says as he stares back at the blackness. What do you mean you are in your room? I'm staring right at you, Beth, Beth screams. What are you talking about? He stops as he hears Beth scream again. Without thinking, he runs back into the closet. The blackness envelops him, and he reappears in Beth's bedroom. He stops short and is horrified at what he sees. Beth laying cold and lifeless, like all the blood has been drained from her body, and then he sees himself standing over top of her. 
So glad you decided to join us, the doppelganger says, as it reaches out a hand that seems to elongate as the doppelganger grasps his throat. Eric feels his excruciating pain and cold envelop him as his life essence drains away. Wow. I got excited. I would have been really excited as a teenager to have like a way to get to my boyfriend's bed. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> but not like that. Um, that was good, Scott. Wow, well, thank that you. was really good. Yeah. yeah, that was really cool. Thank you. Yeah, like I said, it's been a story that's been in my head forever and I just didn't know how to form it. So it's kind of fun to actually write it all out like this. That was really fun. I, but I was still like, as you were talking, I'm like, oh man, like connected bedrooms like <laughs> like well that just to tell you the truth yeah. that idea was why it became 700 something words because i was like oh they're bouncing back and forth to each other's bedroom and Ooh, like, enveloped <laughs> by the oh, blackness. oh yeah mm-hmm. give, me the, give me that blackness okay. <laughs> <laughs> well mine mine's a little different so i'll i'll start mine if you're ready go for it all right uh, i called this the wind I walk alongside her the wind is chilly the sun is setting it's october it's my favorite month Usually a hoodie would be enough, but it's not today. I'm cold. It's damp. The grass is wet with dew, and I can feel the water soak into my sock. We come here every year, every year since she died. I can't believe it's been three years. I wish I could go back in time. I wish I could have stopped it. I wish I could have changed it. The gravestones, they multiply. Each year, I see a new one. Another stone-cold reminder of a life gone with a name and a date. Usually there are flowers. Usually we see the same fresh and old ones every year. I guess other people have this ritual, too. We approach her headstone. She drops to her knees. I reach out to touch her, but I know better. She can't be touched right now, not in this state. She lowers the flowers slowly to the ground. She lets the tear fall and quietly says, I miss you. I lower my head and release a tear. I say, I miss you too. She takes a moment and then stands up. She turns and walks away. I follow. She's walking from the wind now. Her hair is flipped forward into her face. It's cold, so cold. I should have worn more than a hoodie. I need to get warm. She turns around, her hair flies back. I can see her face. It's full of sadness. I want to hug her. I want to take the pain away. I take a step towards her and she speaks. I will see you too next year. I love you. She turns away and opens the gates and leaves the cemetery. I look back to the graves. I'm cold. I'm tired. I should rest, but I can't. I will wait and walk with her again. Wow. Oh, shit. (laughs) I like that. That's that's sad, but like beautiful at the same time. Thanks. Wow. I believe that was in 1995's version of Tales from, <laughs> Tales from the Hoodie. <laughs> Tales from the Hoodie. <laughs> so, Brandon, do you want to uh, say which one you like the best? I like the best. <laughs> <laughs> Did he say something? I couldn't no. hear him. No, he was oh, doing that, that on good. purpose. <laughs> like, maybe I didn't hear No, it. if I had to pick a winner, it'd be... <laughs> <laughs> well as you can see brandon chose nobody so <laughs> i choose the both fine. of you oh that's fine you can choose both of us if you don't want to choose one and i don't really care scott do you care no. <laughs> no no um but we will put them up they're both very different one is one is written from a first person perspective and one is written from more of a, like a storytelling perspective i guess or third person i guess it would be no what would yours be written from scott? mine would, would be kind be? of I kind of pictured mine more as like a novel. A novel like, kind of thing? Okay. Yeah. A novelette. novelette. Yeah, a novelette, yes. So, yeah. So thank you, everybody, for joining us. Um, and a very special thank you to Brandon. Yes. Um, I'm so glad that you were joining us for this one. I showed. You did. You did. <laughs> you did. And Brandon is truly one of our favorite people in this horror community. Um, because he's on here and he can't go anywhere. I straight up only did horror trivia so I could talk to Brandon because he wouldn't (laughs) talk to me otherwise. So I figured if I do the horror trivia tournament that we did last year, he and I would be forced to be friends. Well, you know what? After you played horror trivia, I realized you didn't do it because you had knowledge of horror trivia. (laughs) (laughs) It was bad, guys. If you want to go back, I I guess those episodes are gone now because they were on the Horror Philia Network. We had to destroy them after your episode. (laughs) (laughs) That's fair. That is super fair. Uh, But Brandon has tons of knowledge. He knows a lot about films from all different decades. He's extremely funny. And he's handsome. Like he's looking really good today. And he has this hat on and like, like kind of has his curly hair kind of sticking out a little bit. And he has this nice fuzz going on. And he really is one of the nicest, smartest people that we know in the horror community. And you can find him on the Exploding Heads podcast, which we've had Dave see on before. So 
If you haven't already signed up to be a Patreon, what are you waiting for? Scott, it's I think Heather's it. a changeling. This is not. <laughs> She's a changeling. She Where's is a her... different person on the show. Where's the real Heather? <laughs> I. This is how I truly feel about you, Brandon. Uh, I don't. I would never make fun of you to the amount that I do if I didn't actually feel this way. Exactly. Well, it's true, right? Um, Scott, did you did you want to say anything about exploding heads? Do you want to do kind of a push? Or Brandon, do you want to say anything about exploding heads? I have nothing to say about exploding heads. <gasps> I don't even like exploding. <laughs> <laughs> Yes. When are we going to be done with this show? 140 episodes? How many yeah. more movies do I have to review? <laughs> the only thing I have left to say is basically. <laughs> uh, but yeah, I, I have to agree, though. I, I've been a fan of you guys' show since like pretty much since I started listening to podcasts. I told Dave wow. Z that, too. And, and yeah, I also have to thank Heather because I've tried reaching out to your ass, Brandon, multiple times, and conversation never just seemed to happen. So I'm so thankful she created this chat group for us because like, we've all become very close in this little chat. We of have. Ours. We like, have. really <laughs> close. Like, yeah. we would kill for each other. So don't exactly. fucking test like, We're starting a cleaning service <laughs> called Mermaid. <laughs> yes. <laughs> we're a cult. It's a real boring cult. We just make fun of each other and talk about food and Brandon naps a lot. And, and goat monsters. I search for dick and <laughs> adopt dogs and Scott just hangs out with cats. But, you know, <laughs> you're welcome to join if you're interested. Um, and I guess, I don't know, Scotty, should you see us out? I feel like I've done a lot of talking. Yeah, I'll say uh, you obviously know where you can find uh, Heather and I. We are on the Friday Night Nurse podcast. Obviously, we are proud members of the Legion podcast family. Um, and please, if you uh, if you're listening to this outside of when we release it for Patreon, why are you doing that? Join up Patreon. You get all this cool content because uh, mm-hmm. we're going to be doing the, at least something once a month for the, the Patreon page. And eventually, we aren't going to be releasing it to everyone to listen to for free. That's so. true. Uh, eventually you get to sign up because we're going to be doing a lot of different fun ideas and we just keep coming up with different things to do. So we hope you guys enjoy this and until next time, unpleasant dreams. Bye. Bye, Felicia. Bye, Felicia.